Hello, I'm Royce from Grace City Church, and I'm here to learn the Bible better. And we're going to be starting on the Gospel of Mark, and I'm trying to follow along uh, with the sermons on Sundays at Grace City Church. Um, hopefully I can keep up, uh, and uh, I'm just going to go one verse at a time. But before I get into the verses, I thought it'd be really good to uh, go through like a general overview of the Gospel itself. A little bit about Mark, a little bit about the gospel, and uh, I read a few of them, and I think the best one that I th thought did a pretty thorough job was John MacArthur, uh, Study Bible, so I think we'll dive into that one this video. We'll keep it short and simple, and then in the next video, we'll dive into the verses one by one, so I'm excited to do this. All right, so here's a little introduction to, to Mark. Mark, for whom this gospel is named, was a close companion of the Apostle Peter and a recurring character in the book of Acts, where he is known as John, whose surname was Mark. And here's some reference, you know, verses to reference. It's always good to back things up, because if you can't back things up, then we don't have too much here. <laughs> so if it doesn't line up with the word of God, we, it doesn't matter. Um, it was to John Mark's mother's home in Jeru Jerusalem that Peter went when released from prison. And John Mark was a cousin of Barnabas, who accompanied Paul and Barnabas on Paul's first missionary journey. But he deserted them along the way in Persia and returned to Jerusalem. When Barnabas wanted Paul to take John Mark on the second missionary journey, Paul refused. The friction which resulted between Paul and Barnabas led to their separation. And that's all in the book of Acts. John Mark's earlier uh, vacillation evidently gave way to great strength and maturity. And in time, he proved himself even to the Apostle Paul. When Paul wrote the Colossians, he instructed them that if John Mark came, they were to welcome him. Paul even listed Mark as a fellow worker, and later Paul told Timothy to get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for my ministry. John Mark's restoration to useful ministry may have been in part due to the ministry of Peter. Peter's close relationship with Mark is evident from his description of him as Mark my son. Peter of course was no stranger to failure himself and his influence on the younger man was no doubt instrumental in helping him out of the instability of his youth and into the strength and maturity he would need for the work to which God had called him. And a little bit about the background and setting. Whereas Matthew was written to a Jewish audience, Mark seems to have targeted Roman believers, particularly Gentiles, when employing air. Aramaic terms, Mark translated them for his readers. On the other hand, in some places he used Latin expressions instead of the Greek equivalents. He also reckoned time according to the Roman system and carefully explained Jewish customs. Mark omitted Jewish elements, such as the genealogies found in Matthew and Luke. This gospel also makes fewer references to the Old Testament and includes less material that would be of particular interest to Jewish readers, such as that which is critical of the Pharisees and Sadducees. The Sadducees are, are mentioned only once in chapter 12. When mentioning Simon the Cyrene, Mark identifies him as the father of Rufus, a prom prominent member of the church at Rome. All of this supports the traditional view that Mark was written for a Gentile audience initially at Rome. And I just want to point out, like, I read other uh, commentaries that suggest that it was also for a Jewish audience as well. So um, I just want to throw that out there. I, I just read that in other commentaries. Um, I like to, you know, if they contradict each other, I like to just kind of throw that out there. And you can <laughs> kind of think for yourself and for what you, from what, from what you can discover on your own. Um, historical and theological themes. Uh, Mark presents Jesus as the suffering servant of the Lord 
His focus is on the deeds of Jesus more than his teaching, particularly emphasizing service and sacrifice. Mark omits the lengthy discourses found in the other Gospels, often relating only brief excerpts to give the gist of Jesus' teaching. Mark also omits any account of Jesus' ancestry and birth, beginning where Jesus' public ministry began with his baptism by John in the wilderness. Mark demonstrated the humanity of Christ more clearly than any of the other evangelists, emphasizing Christ's human emotions, his human limitations, and other small details that highlight the human side of the Son of God. Okay, so that's just a little overview of the Gospel of Mark from John MacArthur. And I think we'll leave it at that for this time. And then next time, the next video, we will get into uh, uh, verse by verse, digging into uh, references and everything that we can find. So, And uh, remember, we live in this body by faith in the Son of God who loved us and died for us. All right, God bless you and see you next time.